What's up, yeah, it's Joe. I'm pretending to be happy because I actually fucked up. I fucking filmed this and you know, I deleted it by accident. And so I'm doing this video again, whatever. I'm not gonna hide the fact I fucked up. <laughs> All right guys, so this video is about this software I discovered. It is called Time Bolt. And if you guys follow me on Twitter, you guys probably noticed that I mentioned this thing, right? Uh, the cool thing about this software, basically it saves you the massive amount of time of basically cutting out uh, silence in your footage, right? Uh, for example, Here's one of Paul's projects, uh, you know, one of his probing Paul's videos. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically all that shit, you know, basically the software cuts it out, right? So if we can see here, let me zoom into the clip here. As you can see here, there's a lot of pauses throughout the video. You know, obviously it just happens, right? He gets distracted, he makes a mistake, he coughs, he sneezes. Uh, he has his pet dog in the garage that, you know, probably bumps him. You know, something happens, right? So there's always a lot of like pauses throughout the video, right? Usually one of the things I'll do is basically I'll use my shortcuts, right? To make a cut, you know, do a ripple delete, move on here, then move over here, then you know, I do all that manually, right? So obviously that can take up a lot of time, right? Uh, if you're the type of person that you use you don't have like a macros, you probably use like the, the tools built into uh, Premiere Pro, right? Say you use like the blade tool, you make a cut, you make a cut, then you select it and delete. You know, all that can take time doing it, you know, one by one, right? Let me undo that. All right, so basically what this software does, it basically does all that for you, right? And that thing can save you a lot of time. Usually when I cut out the silence, it could take up to like an hour or two. This is where Time Bolt comes in. Now I have a link to the description where you guys can go to the actual website for this software. And in this website, the creator, he does a very good job of providing like a lot of YouTube videos. Definitely check out the video hub section right here. There's plenty of information on how this uh, software works, right? So I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how it works, about the settings and all this stuff. You are able to look into this thing, right? The one thing I do wanna get into is basically show you how it works and how it can benefit you, right? Now this software is not perfect. However, if you are a person, say like me right now, basically I'm creating like a video using OBS, right? I have a webcam that's going straight to uh, OBS. I have a microphone that's going into OBS. And also I'm doing a screen capture that's being captured by OBS, right? All that information is being combined into OBS and it's gonna be exported into like a single video file, right? So that's the cool thing about that is I'm able to drop that footage inside of this software and it basically will cut out all the desk space for me. Then I can export a file and finish off the video in Premiere Pro, right? That's where this uh, software benefits the most. Um, at the moment, this software is not good if you have a lot of multi-cam and multi-audio tracks because it does not sync for you, right? Um, that's probably like one of the bad things about this software. It does have videos on how to sync multi-cam. It shows you how to do that by doing some offsetting uh, numbers, uh, but that does not work for me, right? Like I said, please do your own research on this software and look into that, right? But uh, yeah, it does show you a way how to use this software with multi-cam footage to sync up together. But uh, the way how he does it, it doesn't work for me. But uh, you know, I did find a way to work with multi-cam footage, but I'll show you that in another video, right? So just a quick overview. If we go into the settings here, we are able to have options here to help like the software basically detect uh, the silence area, right? Basically, it'll create filters where I can like uh, add like noise reduction filters and I can also like normalize the audio peaks, right? That way it can detect, you know, what's silence and what's noise, right? So that's kind of cool that I can do that. Um, you are able to like select to render out a video if you want to render from this software because you're able to do that using the GPU, which is, I think is pretty cool. And also depending on what software you use, you can export a file to import inside of your editing software, right? In my case, I use Premiere Pro, so I can export an XML file. But I have an option here to select where it can create the splits, like it do the cuts, but it will not delete it. So that way when I import the XML file inside of Premiere Pro, everything's already cut up for me, but it's not deleted. And that could be beneficial for me, say if I was to do some like uh, time-lapse stuff, right? So if I want to have that information, the video information, uh, but if I want to, you know, speed up the time of it, you know, because it's a time-lapse, then I do have the video clip still there, right? Shortcuts, simple. And you're also able to do some screen recording, you know, from the software itself, right? But like I said, I'm not gonna get too much into that. And also if you have any like uh, questions or whatever, there's a button right here that you can push that says need help. 
and I'll open up like a website that'll kind of gives you a quick overview on what the software can do along with, you know, you can, like I said, you can check the video hub where he has tutorials on how to use the software, right? So yeah, this guy does a good job of, you know, making sure you're not lost when it comes to using the software. So now, how did this software work? So I'm gonna use the same clip that I dropped in inside of Premiere Pro. And as you can see here, this clip is almost 40 minutes long, right? So we're gonna use the same clip and I'm gonna drop in inside of Time Bolt here. And that's kind of cool. You can just do a, you can click and drag it inside. And as you can see, it starts working right away. So I'm gonna give that like a minute or two. As you can see, it's kind of cool. That it gives you like a visual, um, gives you like a little window player so you can see what you have here. Uh, there's an option down here. We can expand the timeline. Uh, the cool thing with this timeline is that if you have an ultra wide uh, monitor, and if you were to expand the timeline, it does expand to like the length of your, uh, to the width of your monitor, right? So, you know, you have more information to work with, right? This is probing Paul. 60? Yeah, number 60. Recording on April 3rd. So you can see pretty much everything that is read, it gets skipped over. That's when it's going to get deleted when you export this file inside of a, your editing software, right? Um, the cool thing is that if you want, you're able to like select these clips and they turn red. And so when they're red, they basically get deleted, right? So you're able to do that. You can go through like the whole video and pretty much like delete the stuff that you don't need, right? Now, I'm not going to do that because, you know, this is a 40 minute clip. So basically the fact that he, this software already cut out like a good chunk of like the silent areas, that's already a massive felt as it is. So we go down here to like the silent detection options. By default, this was like a negative 60, right? Now uh, that's too low for me, for my footage. Uh, for what works for me the most is like having it at negative 30, right? Usually when I'm editing anything that's negative 30, I tend to like reduce it anyway. So anything that's under negative 30, it gets cut off. And that's what happened here, right? Oh, that is noise. The other feature I do like about this software is basically you are able to select, say if somebody was to cough, you know, they sneeze or something like that, that spike in audio, any noise spikes, you are able to select it here to be ignored, right? So in this case, ignore detection shorter than 0.75 seconds. So that's really cool, right? So anything that's underneath that uh, duration. So obviously if somebody coughs, it's a very sh short spike, right? So that short like burst of audio, it gets ignored, right? And same thing here, pretty much any silence is longer than 0.5, it turns red, it gets deleted. Uh, the paddings here, what this does is, as you can see here, like where it's green, that little uh, section where it goes from silence towards pause speaking, that's what the padding is, right? You are able to select how much of a space there is between the person speaking to silence or from silence to when the person is speaking, right? That way when like you export this into uh, Premiere Pro, your audio clips has some breathing space, right? That way it's not too abrupt with a bunch of cuts. It doesn't cut off right with the moment the person stops speaking and it doesn't cut off the moment when the person starts speaking, right? So it gives you like a little space to add some transitions that way like it doesn't feel like it's too like congestion right so that's kind of cool and if you were to make any changes here you can hit a uh, update selection detection and they'll pretty much redo everything here for you um if you were to change any one of these features right so i'm gonna leave everything as is they do have some other in options here rendering enhancements and you're able to select like music in the background but this is when you want to render from this software I'm not going to do that, so I'm not going to mess with this right here. And down here we have options, right? You can export your clips individually. So everything that's green here, you are able to export them individually, which is helpful, which I'm going to show you why it's helpful, but in another video, right? You can export it in an EDL file, which is something that uh, DaVinci Resolve use. You can export it in an XML file for Final Cut Pro. And in my case, I'm going to export it in an XML file for Premiere Pro. So that's what I'm going to do, right? So it's very quick. And the cool thing about that is uh, it exports the file next to like the original clip that you dropped into this software, right? If, so we have to click on the name here. It opens up and there it is, right? The XML file next to like the original clip. So let's minimize that. We're going to go back to Premiere Pro. So now I'm going to drop in my XML file. And if you work with XML files before, the cool thing about it is that, you know, it, it drops in the footage that you use inside of Premiere Pro and it also creates a sequence for you that matches the, the values of your footage, right? So if it, in this case it's 1080p at 60 frames per second, it creates a sequence for you, it's ready to go. And you double click it, yeah, see all those like tiny little cuts? All those things I would have done myself if I would have taken the time to like manually cut out the silence one by one. For today's, for today's video, for today's video I'm going to be answering several. So now the cool thing about that is basically if I was to like watch this video over. Uh, just recording. Um, uh, lav mic and do pardon me pardon me okay <clears throat> see so now it's just like you know it's a lot easier for me to just like you know look at this crap be like all right we don't need that hello everyone and welcome back to skip that hello everyone and welcome back skip that hello everyone and welcome all right so again you know just junk delete that welcome back to pro skip that coming down the pipeline so to speak so all those cuts here we don't need delete 
for today's video, I all that is all the cuts are done and ready for me. So now all I have to do is like watch this video over and cut out the stuff that I don't need. It basically did the rough cuts for me. So now all I can do is just cut out all the crap that I don't need. Probably save like over two hours worth of work depending on the video, right? And if I was to select this video, copy it, let's go back to the original clip here. And if I was to paste it, as you can see, here's like the length of the original video. It's up to almost 40 minutes, right? And here's the length of like the footage. Well, all the silence cut out. You know, you can see it cut out almost like 20 minutes worth of silence, right? Now, if I was to cut out more crap, obviously this video is going to go down to maybe 13 minutes, right? You know, cutting out all the other stuff they don't need in this video, right? But see, that's time that got saved by me using this software, right? So yeah, it's really cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to keep this video as short as possible. But yeah, this software is really cool, right? However, again, it's not perfect. Uh, this software is mainly more designed for people in my situation, what I'm doing right now, right? I'm making a tutorial, you know? I'm capturing my camera, I'm capturing my mic, and I'm capturing my screen all being funneled inside of OBS. OBS creates one individual file that has all that information, right? So now I'm able to like use that uh, one individual file. I drop it inside of this. It cuts out all the crap that I don't need. Then I'm able to, you know, import that to Premiere Pro and I'm able to finalize the video. And then boom, you know, I just, a video that would have taken me maybe, say three hours. Most likely I'm gonna get this video done within like maybe under two hours or one, depending on how fast you can get this video done, right? You know, that's how this software can benefit you. Now, if you were to go to like an area where there's a lot of noise, say like a convention and an expo, you know, there's a lot of people talking in the background and stuff like that. Most likely this software is not gonna help you in that sense, right? But in other areas, this software can help you. Is say, say like if you were to do a podcast, let's see, let me create a new, create a new uh, window here. And let's say you have a podcast. I'm gonna use Pause Love Lear Mic as an example. You are able to drop in a waveform file. And there you go, basically, you know, it works with waveform files as well, right? So if you were to do a podcast, maybe a phone conversation, an interview, something where, you know, this is mainly just audio, right? You're able to like cut out the dead space using this software to help you save time. So when you upload it to YouTube or I don't know where you upload podcasts at, but you know, now this is gonna save you time to edit your audio, right? Uh, if you were to do a Twitch stream, you know, you want to cut out like a lot of like dead space, right? And your Twitch streams, right? Cause your streams could be long. Same thing, the software can help you out to shorten your video if you want to upload it to YouTube, right? So yeah, this software is really cool, right? Now, unfortunately, like I said, the limitation with this software is that uh, if you were to have a multi-cam situation, if you have more than one camera, more than one mic, it does not sync all that for you, right? It doesn't do that. I did find a way to sync all this using my own software, right? But I'm gonna get into that in another video, right? But you wanna make sure to make that clear. If you wanna use this software, there are limitations, right? So just wanna make that clear. And to end the video, how much does this thing cost? He has three uh, price plans, right? Since I wasn't sure if I was gonna like the software or not, I went for like the monthly, pan, the monthly plan, $12.99. So I'm using it, I do like it. I do attend on like buying the lifetime plan, which is $247, right? But I'm gonna wait till obviously my monthly subscription is over so I can cancel this and then, you know, buy the lifetime plan, right? Which I think is cool. They do have a free version, you know, but in the free version, what happens is that uh, you have a watermark somewhere in the top left corner of the video when you're rendering it out. And yeah, you're only able to render out videos from the software. So these features down here, you're not able to export an XML file so you can, you know, you can finalize it in your editing software. You have to render it directly from this software itself, right? So uh, keep that in mind. But still, I think it's kind of cool they do offer a free version so you can try it out. Yeah, that's all I got to say about this software. I like it. I think it's fucking cool. I'm glad I came across this because, yeah, doing all that rough cut editing manually does take up a lot of time where, you know, I'd rather use that hour or two for something else. Yeah, I'm definitely going to come back with another video showing you how I use this software uh, to edit multicam because uh, it's not difficult, but there is a process. There are a few steps you need to take to... That way you can sync up all your audio and still be able to cut out the noise and uh, retain like the, the original raw files, right? Thank you so much for watching this video. Links in the description to check out this uh, software. I think it's really cool. And uh, yeah, I think you guys can benefit from this guy as well, right? So uh, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, take care and peace.